The Sleeping Giant, an Australian supervolcano, has recently been discovered through geological exploration. A geological survey team says an ancient supervolcano exuded more than 450 cubic kilometers of molten magma in one single eruption over what are now Ganiyatjara tribal lands. Geochemist Dr. Hugh Smythe says it's the largest supervolcano he is aware of on our planet. He says it was active for likely in excess of 30 million years. Can you imagine? 30 million years of eruptive activity. He says the typical lifespan of volcanic systems is usually measured in the many hundreds of thousands of years up to a couple of million. But certainly 30 million years is just extraordinary. Dr. Smythe says the eruption occurred at the point where three tectonic plates converged. He says the Earth's crust had been unusually hot in this location for some 200 million years beforehand, partly due to the North Australian, Western Australian, and Southern Australian cratons attempting to pull apart. Well, we know we have a hot spot in Hawaii that we recently saw um, uh, erupting. And he says now, I refer to this as a chronically frustrated rift. This region, he goes on to add, has contained some of the hottest crust that the world ever knew. The magma magmas produced in that prior 200 million years were very thorium rich, thorium, producing a lot of radiokinetic heat, keeping the area hot as well. Can you imagine? Dr. Smythes and his team found the supervolcano while exploring the Musgrave Ranges in the Western Desert of the Geological Survey of Western Australia. He says it involves systematic mapping and systematic geochemical sampling to try and gauge what the geochemical variations in the magmas were, he says. He says this was a particularly interesting part of the geology of the region that we spent a bit more time on than we normally do. The mapping allowed us to estimate the volumes of eruption the erupted material, and that's where the super eruption concept comes from. They're defined as single eruptions that have volumes in excess of 450 cubic kilometers. The mapping allows us to establish the unit we are looking at, mapping as a single depositional unit, and to estimate the actual volumes. He says supervolcanoes are relatively rare phenomena, and this one may be unique for Australia. The area is part of a fully determined native title claim, and he was keen to acknowledge the traditional owner's participation. Quote, this whole project has been a joint project with the indigenous people of that region, and quote, says Dr. Smythes. And he adds, in terms of economic potential, there's obviously a lot of hypothermal alteration associated with big volcanic systems, and so it possibly heralds a hitherto unrecognized gold area that's potentially conductive to gold mineralization, end quote. The geological events referred to in his paper occurred approximately 1,220 to 1,020 million years ago. We're talking about over a billion years ago. Dr. Smythe says they were likely to have been several eruptions that were of super size, and they occurred between about 1 million 78 to 1 million 40 million years ago. We're talking about over a billion years ago. Now, the five places that mark Australia's extreme geologic past, Dr. Tom Raimondo states, and he's, these are some of his pictures, the red rocks of Central Asia hide an incredible geologic secret. And as we see here, these are the red rocks. They hide an incredible geologic secret. Australia is often thought of as an ancient and quiescent continent, the sleeping giant in a world where landscapes dramatically change in front of our very eyes. Earthquakes have shattered New Zealand and Italy, Tsunamis have inundated Japan and Indonesia, 
and volcanic eruptions have blasted Iceland and Russia, to name a few. In Australia, however, our activity seems to be limited to steady northward drift at a rate of centimeters per year. So Australia is just slowly inching northward. But Australia's past is far from sleepy. He says, there are five places where evidence of extreme history is written in the stone. Central Australia, world's biggest gravity warp. What exactly is a gravity warp? Driving along the Stewart Highway from Adelaide to Darwin, we can see it can seem like an uneventful journey with miles and miles of flat country, only occasionally interrupted by low hills and dry creeks. But hidden beneath the red earth are some of the biggest subsurface anomalies you have ever seen. Just north of the outback town of Marla, the layer underneath the earth's crust called the mantle rises up 30 kilometers closer to the surface along an extensive fault system known as the Woodruff Thrust Man Fault. The mantle is much denser than typical continental crust, so the Woodruff Thrust Man Fault is visible in gravity maps as a linear streak running east-west. And we can see that in the middle of the colored image here of Australia that we see in the left, east-west. That's a ridge with a white arrow showing at it. The gravity anomalies, bright red streaks ind indicated by the white arrow, show places where the Earth's mantle is 30 kilometers closer to the Earth's surface. This is supplied by Geoscience Australia. Gravitational acceleration is faster in the red areas at the core of the fault zone compared to the blue areas on either side. The difference in gravity along the fault zone is so dramatic that it has been recognized as the largest continental gravity gradient anywhere in the world. So if you were to drop a rock on your foot on the journey from Adelaide to Darwin, better do it at a fuel stop in Marla than while sightseeing at the border of South Australia and the Northern Territory the lower gravity at Marla means the rock will be slightly lighter, so it might hurt a little bit less. Now, concerning Lake Ackerman, a crater of cataclysmic proportions. And here upcoming we have uh, a Google map GIF of it. Looking down from space, Lake Ackerman seems innocuous enough to the gentle slopes of the northern Eyre Peninsula in South Australia, but its circular shape hints at a truly, truly cataclysmic origin. Look at it. Okay, what is this? Lake Ackerman is the site of one of the largest meteorites to strike our planet. That's what it is. A meteor impact right there. It's a Im meteor impact. This lake is actually the eroded remains of the giant meteorite impact crater that is about 600 million years old. It's actually 580 million years old and estimated to be up to 90 kilometers wide, one of the largest craters ever identified on the planet. No surprises then that the impact energy was equivalent to more than 5 million megatons of TNT enough to produce a global catastrophe that included seismic shocks, tsunamis, and super hurricanes. Super hurricanes. Material ejected from the crater has been identified more than 300 kilometers east in rocks of the Flinders, Flander, Flinders Range in, uh, in Australia, of course. And here we have pink fragments of pulverized granite ejected from a meteorite, meteorite crater. And here you have, look at this, all the striations of all this. Here features such as shatter cones, shocked quartz, and pulverized rock fragments are seen within a distinctive sedimentary layer known as an ejecta horizon. Look at that, look at this. You can imagine what was going on on Earth. Today, the crater is much flatter than when it first formed, with up to five kilometers of material stripped off its surface over time, yet it still remains as an unmistakable imprint of an extraterrestrial visitor. 
the meteorite impact that entered with a giant bang. Olympic Dam, Earth Super, Supervolcano. The Yellowstone caldera is the largest active supervolcano on the planet, but even it is dwarfed by the remnants of a much older supervolcano found in the Gawler Ranges of South Australia. This region contains a lava field that stretches for 500 kilometers in diameter with individual eruptions up to 300 meters thick and a total lava volume as high as 500,000 cubic kilometers. That's enough to fill Sydney Harbor, Harbor a million times over. Thick layers of hot lava from the Gawler Ranges supervolcano cooled to form hexagonal columns called organ pipes. What's even more remarkable is that the piping hot lava reached temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius and erupted from the volcano almost instantaneously, most likely from large fissures in the crust that burst open nearly 1,600 million years ago. We're talking about one and a half billion years ago. But perhaps the most extreme consequences of this geological phenomenon was that it also produced the world's largest hydrothermal deposit, a spectacular ore system filled with huge reservoirs, reserves of copper, uranium, silver, and gold. Olympic Dam contains approximately 9 billion tons of ore, a remarkable byproduct of the hugely enriched ore-forming fluids associated with the Gawler Ranges volcanic system. And the Flinder, Flinder Ranges, a snowball in the tropics. You can imagine the hot and humid tropics instead being blanketed by freezing ice. Geologists have discovered that this bizarre idea was a reality some 650 million years ago using evidence from glacial rock of the Flinders Ranges that were deposited at sea level and closer to the equator. Glacial rocks. In fact, this evidence has been used to argue that the whole planet was once covered in ice sheets up to several kilometers thick, a scenario called Snowball Earth. Amazingly, global glaciation was thawed by a sudden reversal to warmer temperatures about 635 million years ago. A sudden reversal from the Snowball Earth to warmer temperatures. In the Flinders Ranges, this event is marked by the sharp transition from glacial sediments to dolomite, a distinctive sedimentary rock that formed in a warm, shallow sea. And we get the fossils there from the Ediacarian period, which began around 635 million years ago. Nearby quartz rocks contain Ediacarian fossils. They are the oldest soft-bodied organisms ever discovered, like the trolobites. We have uh, uh, fossilized leaves, fossilized uh, sea animals. The Ediacarian period, named after the hills that contain these fossils, it's indicated by a bronze plaque known as the Golden Spike, the only one in the southern hemisphere. The Mari River, the ancient watercourse that can seem to only live up to its name during periods of flooding, with small shallow mouth that is often choked with sand, but Australia's longer river has also produced some of the deepest submarine canyons ever found. And these incredible features sit far beneath the sea level near Kangaroo Island, reaching lengths of 80 kilometers and depths of over 5,000 meters, greater than twice the height of Mike Mount Kosyoko and the tall enough, tall enough to easily shallow Colorado's Grand Canyon Hole. One of the largest is named Sprigg Canyon after the geologist Reg Sprigg, who discovered them with the help of the Royal Australian Navy in 1947. Pretty recently, they were still discovering Australia, as we can see. The canyons were produced when the Murray River wound its course far beyond the present coastline, when sea levels were much lower during the most recent ice age, of course, and the continental, uh, continental shelf was dry. So while the true erosive power of the Murray River is rarely seen, the scars of its forgotten past to the deep ocean can still be found in this spectacular underwater world. 
and this is uh, by, of course, the exploration by Tom, Dr. Tom Raimondo. He's a geoscientist and program director for environmental and geospatial science at the University of South Australia. He's also one of RN's top five under 40 scientists. And uh, you can hear him, uh, uh, well, I guess you, ha you could see, hear him or uh, see his uh, uh, lectures on YouTube. This is from um, ABC Australia, and I'll leave links below for you for this.